I have a second channel, Cube Compium DDX. Hey everybody, here we have this Hypro model HP dash P301 7F3. It's too, it was too small for me to read on the uh, screen of the camera. So HP dash P three hundred one seven F three. This power supply, believe it or not, actually came out of a Dell system. As you can see, this little sticker right here is pretty typical of Dell components. Um, <clears throat> the reason why I say it's kind of hard to believe is because. Usually the uh, units that come out of Dell computers are branded as Dell power supplies, but they're made by OEMs like Hypro, Lighton, sometimes Best Tech. Though the Best Tech units I've seen in Dell systems actually um, bear the Best Tech branding. But this power supply here, um, while it comes on and runs, it does not establish a power good signal to the motherboard, therefore the computer that you install the SIM will not post. So, um, one thing I have noticed about it is I did spot at least one bulging capacitor in it, so we're going to attempt a recap of this unit. So it's going to take the cover off and have a look inside. Now look at this. First time, first time that we've ever cracked this one open. Don't you just love cracking that warranty seal? So, yeah, I, I thought I actually had looked inside this one before, but apparently I've not. But um. It looks like we'll be at least doing a partial recap of this unit. So, right about, right in here is there's, there's a bulging TPO capacitor. So, um, as mentioned, the unit comes on and runs. Voltages seem about where they need to be. However, power good is not established. So this unit is pretty, I'd say pretty jam-packed. It's got uh, it's, it's got a uh, got a pretty good bit of stuff in it. So I'm gonna figure out how to get this case out of here. It'd be nice if it was a cam a, a clamshell, but uh it's not. It's got um, a little daughter board right here. And it's got this LED that is glued into place right here. I'll, I'll have to pop that loose in order to get uh, this thing out. And I should mention this power supply has been unplugged for quite some time. Um, you do want to be, be careful with these things because sometimes they can hold a charge. Generally, they do discharge pretty rapidly after you remove power from them, but I always want to use some caution with these things. Because in the primary over here, you have over 300 volts DC. Okay, so um, let me get a look at what capacitors we have in this unit. Gotta go and cut some zip ties to gain access to some things. Okay, so just want to see what values of capacitors we have in here. Because I may not have every single value. So in that case, I'll be doing a partial recap. But we definitely want to replace the, the uh, capacitors that are bulging because those are obviously the ones that are, that are failing. Okay, so here's a look at the uh, capacitors. Um, the one that has failed is a 2200 microfarad 10 volt capacitor. I definitely have those. I also got another 2200 10 volt cap over here, which is fine, at least visually. Um, looks like we have 
one or two 2200 microfarad 16 volt caps. I, I'm assuming they're 16 volt. I can't see everything, but they're near the 12 volt output. So I'm going to assume that we have two of those for the 12 volt outputs. And this unit has single 12 volt rail. We have an LTEC capacitor over here. I think it's 4700 microfarad. 3300 or 4700 microfarad. I don't have that size and same for this TIPO 4700 microfarad. I want to say it's 10 volt likely for the 3.3 or 5 volt rails. That's a lot of capacitor just for the 5 volt rail or the 3.3. This one has a 22 amp 5 volt rail and a 17 amp 3.3 volt rail. 18 amps on the plus 12. So this thing is another example of a high 57 mixture of caps. We have TPO, we have Chemicon, we have LTEC, we even have a Rubicon capacitor in here. And it's right down there. And it's, I'm going to safely assume that's for 3.3 volts. So 3.3 volts over here, 5 volt outputs over here. So I'm going to say these two big capacitors here are likely for the plus 5. Again, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of capacitor for the five volt rail. <laughs> um, yeah, you would typically see that on older units that have their outputs heavily on the uh, five volt rail. But this one, I mean, 22 amps on the plus five isn't too awful heavy, but I mean, it is pretty pretty hefty. So that being said, I'm going to take this PCB out of here. Okay, now we've got the uh, circuit board loose. And um, I must say, have a look at the bottom of this circuit board and compare that with. Why well, don't put it back together? But one of these FSP units. And you'll see a huge difference in quality and workmanship. I must say, uh, while I like the Hypro units, the uh, the Chickeny Power units that are, I think, a spinoff of Hypro or uh, whatever, um, it seems like the Chickeny Power units do have reliability problems because, like for example, Delta Bucks 390s got a pretty close to 100% failure rate on the uh, Chickeny Power units. But the Hypros are pretty dang tough, I must say. They do have their issues, particularly with capacitors like a lot of units do. So we're going to change out the capacitors that I can change out based on what I have in stock and let's see if that uh, resolves the power good issue with this unit. Okay so I got the uh, PCB mounted back into the uh, case and I still gotta attach the uh, switch, the Lord selection switch got to get it in there and get that reattached but uh got the bulk of the capacitors replaced and apparently the caps I put in are exactly the same series as one of the, the existing Rubicon caps or at least a very similar series they were about the same size and you see over here there's a replacement there um one thing I do want to note is the one capacitor that bulged was right next to a hot load resistor right there. And if you look on the side of this cap you can see the heat that was uh, just constantly being sent off onto this capacitor when the unit was running. That's a good bit of heat. <laughs> so what I did is I tried to I tried to set this capacitor where it was a little bit further away from that resistor um, because the original was like right up against it. So this one here um, tried to angle it off just a little bit that way it's not right up against that resistor. So, it's just going to be a matter of putting this thing back together and back ports testing it and then checking to see if the power good signal is working or not. Okay everybody, so the uh, power supply passed the back ports test 
no blow-ups or nothing like that but what was weird about it was initially the uh, unit did still did not have power good um, when you would power up this unit the LED on the back would not light up it would light up when it was in standby but the LED will go out when the unit started up all the voltages are well within ATX spec and I said, you know, what the heck, let's go ahead and drop it into a 390 system and let's see what it does. Um, the crazy thing was the first couple of times I tried to start the system, well, actually, as soon as I plugged in the power supply, the unit, of course, the uh, computer, the Dell Optiplex 390, does a self-test. It briefly powers up to test the power supply to see if it works. And it wasn't getting power good, so the LED up front was flashing amber. But... After a couple minutes, I unplugged it. Actually, I shut it down. Manually shut it off with the power button and try to start it again. Lo and behold, it started up. Okay, so I've let this thing sit for a little while just in standby um, and soft off. Let's see if it'll start. And you can see the uh, power good flash there for a moment so it struggled to get going um, so off camera I um, actually did try to start this thing a few minutes ago and it didn't want to start initially but after letting it sit for just a little while uh, things kinda warmed up inside there and it started working so that tells me there's likely um, failed capacitors elsewhere in a unit. Probably the little ones on the little daughter board where the uh, I think it's the supervisory chip where that's located. Um, that might be a bit more challenging to repair but I may give it a shot. Um, I may pull that little daughter board out um, depending on how many pins I has, it probably shouldn't be too terrible to get out but again that's a bit more intermediate soldering which I mean I can do it's just aggravating. Um, manage to get that out of there and I can uh, change out those capacitors or if I'm lucky I might actually be able to do it without taking the daughter board off I will have to take the entire PCB back out of the case to do it but we shall see so try one more time you can see how power good started right up that time so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh let it sit and we'll try it again and then I'll get video footage next time trying to start it from cold and show you what it does okay so I've let this thing sit for a little bit um, let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it does and of course being this being the Ultra 390 is going to automatically do a self test and turn itself on so let's see what happens to the power good indicator the, when if it's working properly the power good LED should come right back on so it's going to initially light up for if I will stand by then it's going to go out and it should come right back on for power good if there's any delay or it flickers on and off or stays out then we know the power good is not properly functioning you can see it's out And the computer, of course, is flashing amber on the power indicator because the power supply, even though it's running, is effectively failing the self-test. So you can see the uh, LED is currently out. I'll just adjust the camera to point at it just in case it comes on by itself. I'm going to check and read out the voltages that are being uh, given to the motherboard. So I'll use the uh, chassis as a return path. We're getting, let's see, uh, Actually, this shut off. It just shut off by itself. It, it actually timed out. So I'll start it back up and let's see what happens this time. You can see how 
it flashed a little bit now it's solid we got 3.33 volts on the 3.3 volt rail we got 5.16 on the 5 volt rail Just trying to find out trying to see where 12 volts is on this thing here we are 11.9798 11.98 on the plus 12 so I mean the 3.3 volt, 5 volt, and 12 rails are all within spec. They're actually doing really good. It ain't like the uh, it ain't like the Cicada FSP worlds like all over all over the freaking place. Um, so I'm willing to bet it's probably an issue with one of the little capacitors, probably within the vicinity of the supervisory chip, because I think they work in conjunction with it to. Uh, to uh, light up the power good. It's like a logic circuit. Um, it's either it's on or it's off. Now, some units may vary. So now, you can see the computer's running fine. So, I mean, I could take this power supply and put it in one of my like spare computers and I just simply know just to let it run for a few minutes and then try to start it again for the power good to come on. But I'd like to be able to fix it that were to actually uh, work properly so the simple fact that there is that little bit of a delay before it starts working properly is a is is a dead indicator it's dead on indicator that it's capacitor related so I shut off I'll turn it back on and, and see what see what happens with the LED there you see how it blinked out and came right back on? That um, That's how it's supposed to work. So likely there is, I'm going to say, likely it's an analog circuit that's it's probably like a comparator, um, provided that the voltages, the, uh, like the 3.3 to 5 and 12, they're all within spec. Um, once all those um, satisfy that comparison um, it should light up power good but it's not it's likely it's likely a capacitor in the circuit so I'll be pulling this unit back out and uh, opening it back up later on in another video and uh, I'll probably replace the little capacitors I may end up having to use um, existing ones that I have like from another power supply because I don't have new ones of those on hand but it'd be worth to try worth to try to see if we can get it to work right. So the simple fact that um, like for example, the simple fact that it it tends to want to leave this thing in soft off. You can see earlier how it the uh, the indicator it kind of flickered a little bit before it stayed on. That tends to tell me that it's likely in the circuit that has to do with power good and not necessarily the outputs. I mean the outputs are all they're all solid. There it's not like the uh, not like that FSP unit that I did recently. This thing, this high pro, the outputs are dang solid. And it should have power good, but we'll have to investigate that in a later video. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well, everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to your channel, and be sure to tick that bell so you'll get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget, I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, CubeComp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support, and thanks for watching this video.